I'm about to show you how to fix a QNAP NAS server, which does not boot up. As you can tell, all the HDD lights are red and it won't connect to the network. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Nick. I started Nick's Electronics Repair more than a decade ago, and since then we fixed over 27,000 devices. All right, let's begin by opening up the device. This is supposed to then slide back. There we go. And we're gonna remove the last two screws on the bottom. And this should slide off. I have my oscilloscope hooked into the clock line. Now I'm using the connector labeled LPC-CN1 and I'm putting my probe on pin number one. Let's plug in the unit and let's take a look at our clock line signal. When we have a signal like this, what my understanding is each period, each square here is 40 nanoseconds. However, the system is thinking that this crest right here is the one that's supposed to be over here. So it's thinking that the cycle is only about 40 nanoseconds when in fact it should be 80. This is throwing off the clock signal for the rest of the board and why it's not able to boot up. So we wanna make sure that this crest right here is much, much lower so it's not falsely identified as the actual crest. Now this fault is typically triggered by a defective CPU. So in order to resolve this, we're gonna to have to replace our processor. Let's do that next and then retake a measurement and see what we get. For this process, we're gonna disconnect the power connector our fans. We'll move this out of the way. The fan bays now should be able to lift off in a way. We have no more connectors, so now let's go ahead and remove the screws. We'll have to peel back this little QNAP sticker. And now the board should slide out and up. Before we replace the processor, because it is a BGA type chip, we will have to prep the board for our BGA rework machine. For that process, we'll need to remove our RAM, the CMOS battery, our disk on module or DOM. For that, we'll need to pinch this plastic clip with our needle nose pliers and push it through. And now we should be able to wiggle it off. And finally, our heatsink, same thing. We'll flip it over. And again, we have our plastic clips. So we'll pinch them and push them through. Same with the other one and our heat sink comes off. So in order to remove this chip, the BGA rework machine is gonna to have to get to the solder's melting point. So it's gonna get really hot in the vicinity and we have capacitors and plastic that might melt or get damaged if not covered and protected. So we're gonna use aluminum tape as a heat shield to protect those parts. Now that the board is prepped, let's go ahead and remove the chip. So at this point, we can go ahead and remove our protective aluminum tape. The flux we use is no clean flux, so we don't actually technically need to remove any excess that oozed off the sides, but I think it'll just look a little bit better if we do. And I'm just gonna take the opportunity to clean up the top of the die real quick so we can have a nice clean surface for our thermal paste. So this is our heat sink. We have a little bit of crusted up old thermal paste we'll want to remove. Proper heat transfer between the processor and the heatsink is gonna be crucial. 
that's going to ensure that our replacement processor does not fail from heat stress. And the thermal paste we're using here is MX-4. All right, and it looks like we have pretty good spread here. I probably put a little bit more than I needed, but that's okay. We can put our RAM back in. Now for the CMOS battery, I am actually gonna take the opportunity to replace it with a brand new one because I think the original is about 10 years old at this point. Then we have our disc on module, the DOM. And now we're ready to put it back in the server for further live testing. So now we can go ahead and slide in our board back into the unit. Plug in our power. Of course, we wanna put in our screws. And we'll slide in our fans. There we go. Before we put the full unit back together, let's go ahead and connect in the oscilloscope. So again, we're gonna to connect to pin number one. We'll plug in the unit. Oh boy, look at that. So that signal looks a lot better to me. Now we can tell that our crest to the trough is more pronounced, and this little trough is not as pronounced as it was before. All right, let's disconnect it. And I just heard it beep. This little light on the DOM is flashing, which I don't think that was happening before. Let's flip the unit around. Is it working? It's looking like we have a green light. None of our HDD lights are on. It looks like we have a successful repair. So the unit did fully boot in. The fans aren't spinning as loudly anymore. And I was able to detect it on the network. So we have another successful repair. If you have a QNAP NAS you'd like to send in for us to fix, we offer mail-in repair services. I'll have links to our website. That'll be in the description down below. If you found the video helpful or useful, leave us a like, subscribe for more content, and thank you for watching.